Well, top of some friends, my new friend is Rainbow, Kiwi Bow. I'm sorry, I stumbled there. And, um, in tonight's TNT video, it's gonna be kind of an instructional thing. It's not, well, it's not really instructional, I wouldn't say. I would say this is what I use, this is the equipment I use for my adult repaint. Now, um, I am one of these people who have, who do full acrylic paint, um, repaints so for all the overviews that you have seen I use full acrylics I have started to get the hang of pastels and um, I've already used one watercolor pencil and that's to kind of map out where my stuff is gonna be but I have my tool I have some of my tools over here I will tell you um, some other of my tools that I use for dolly painting so let's get started I'm gonna get started on the prize joy of possessions and um, I've said this in previous videos before um, give me a minute I wouldn't be I did put up the same one before I started the video recording sorry don't smoke kids it's bad for you don't smoke alright so let's get started on um, the prize joy and possession and that is my paints I don't have very many. I actually have a very little bit of a collection I'm going on. Um, my other half, uh, Kuja Hyra, has a lot in this collection, like a lot. Um, actually, the um, uh, Warhammer paint station um, set, you know, with that awesome um, mask. I'll probably put a picture up here um, of it. Um, but he has. A lot of paint so I tend to steal paints from him um, probably maybe I'm gonna say 60% of the time um, but most of the other times I do use my paints which is in this little kind of takeaway box here I know I have paints and I'm actually gonna show you the colors I do have I have everybody's kind of favorite um, ongoing um, thing which is Abaddon Black. Um, I also have this, not Abaddon Black, but I have like a black metallic which is in an old um, Citadel paint pot. Um, this is an airbrush, this is an airbrush um, metallic black that I used for my harpy which I'll be doing an overview soon. Obviously, so these are my blacks, um, um, my airbrush metallic and my both Abaddon blacks. Um, this is my old one, but I still have um, product in there. So, but I do use my new one a lot. Um, another paint that um, tends to get used a lot, especially for me because I do pupils. Not pupils. Um, the black is mainly for, okay. So, the black. My, I use my Abaddon black for mainly um, thickening outlines like. Um, you know, I you do use it for lips sometimes. I do use it for um, sclera, part of your eye, which is here, pretty much a white. And um, um, as you will see in my figure sheet collections, I use black a lot, like a lot. I don't think there isn't one doll that I didn't use black on. <laughs> um, but I most of the time I use these for pupils and eyeliner, most of the time. So that's what I use my Abaddon black for, um, and I use my the white. Um, I use for, I use a scar white, white scar. Um, I just find it easier. It doesn't lit up a lot. Um, it actually takes a while for it to go blur. Um, the serum the serum the serum in white. Uh, it, it 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 just gets clogged up way too quickly. So um, I use scar white. I actually have two parts of these. I still have part of this one. Um, but I use this one for like you know a lot of the time. I use these for the Scalera part of the eyes. Um, sometimes the full um, eye of the eyes. Sometimes for like that zombie look. Um, I also use this for you know if I'm doing kind of like a pure kind of monster, angel monster. Um, I use it a lot with Laguna. It was I I feel Laguna needs more white than other dolls. Um, so I use white for you know, eyebrows, details, stuff like that. But I use it most for the skeletal part of the eye. 
and then I have um, I have another airbrush color. I have um, a gold airbrush color, uh, which I completely love. I don't use it very often, but I did use it on my harpy, and it's amazing. And I have the imperial blue, which is such a beautiful color, guys. I tell you. And this is oh, by the way, these are all Vallejo um, airbrush paints. Um, again, I don't use them very often because I don't use the airbrush um, very often, but. If you do use an airbrush and you want a nice blue that kind of translates into kind of like a purplish blue, like a bubble, um, use this. Uh, it's such a beautiful colour. I love the colour. Um, I don't use it very often because obviously it's an airbrush colour. But when you do, yeah, let me know. Um, I have three different blues. I have, uh, let's see, Mark has three. Nice, uh, okay, Love and Brew. This is um, an old Love and Brew I use. I'm gonna try and, try and use um, this particular white there to make this into like a nice bright color if it's not dried out. I hope not because this is actually a really good color. Um, I use the blues for um, some of my sky reliefs because obviously some of the sky reliefs you know look like blue. Um, I have Temper Guard Blue and Arum in Blue, which I don't know why. Wait a minute. Hang on a minute. There we go. I look at that. So I use Temple Club. I have Temple Club Blue and Arrow in Blue. Um, for the yellows, you know, it doesn't matter whether I'm making this yellow darker or making this yellow lighter or making greens a lot more toxic looking. Doesn't matter. I use Flash Grid. I use Flash. It's yellow. Um, it's actually a very nice um, neutral yellow, and I really like using it. You know, it's again, it's a nice um, base yellow. So you can add white to it to make it like a um, like a pastel yellow, or you can make darker, make it like a mustard yellow. But this is a good base. Um, speaking of good bases. Um, oh, but I, um, I use most, uh, pretty much most of the time I use layers or base paints. Um, sometimes I'll go into a technical paint, sometimes I'll, I'll show you in a bit. Um, sometimes I'll go into a technical paint, sometimes I'll go to an edge paint because there's some colours in the edge paints that you don't actually get on the bases. So I use, um, I have a mood green which is, again, it's a good base green. You no, know, you can add a little bit of yellow to it and a little bit of white to make like a very, very like toxic green. Um, but, I mean, I already have this paint particularly because I ran, ran neck ones in Warhammer. So I have a um, mood green, my red in the reds. Again, this is again the green, the yellow, my red, and my orange are great base colors to start with if you like mixing colors. So I saw my life onto Evil Sun Scarlet because again it's a good base red. You can make it darker, you know, to do like a very burgundy red. You can make it lighter to do a um, pastel red, but or you can just leave it like that. It's good for you like a classic red lipstick if I'm doing like a pen up doll. And then the, a good base orange, and I know it's quite light for it being a base orange, but it's a good base orange. I use fire. Fire Dragon and Bright, and this is a good base orange for you know stuff. I mean, I mean, if I'm going like a good base blue, um, Love Love Run Blue is your best option. So I do have like all of the primary colors, which I think is these, which you know, pretty much I wish I had like bought these two first bought these three first so then I can mix colours. Um, but you know these these are all these are all great base colours. If you're just starting off and whatnot, you know, I wish Games Workshop did this in the set. Um, but these five colours are your good base colours that you can mix together to make, you know, either one and then black and white. So um, then we'll move on to my the one favourite favorite um technical i have and uh, as you know i am a horrid dull wood painter um there's i don't think i i mean there are kind of one one or two dolls here that i'm not horror 
last weekend I just wanted to take a break from horror. But other than that, I am a horror doll repainter. So blood for the blood god. I actually this is my second part. Don't know where my other part is. But this is my second part of Blood for the Blood God. And I tell you guys, it is amazing if you want to do blood effects. I mean you could just dip it in the pot with a paintbrush, you know, and just let it drip on its own. You know, just you know, do a controlled you can do a controlled drip where you just like layer on uh, blood for the blood god in a specific pattern that you want it to go or you can get real fancy and um, just pile it on and then just let it dry you know or just let it run by itself it will, I mean if you're doing, using a very prominent monster high and you're doing the cut here you know, it will go here, it will go here, it will go over there, it will go down there and then also it will go over there, over there, over the cheek and stuff but it's a good paint it's a good technical paint if you want to do blood effects I love it I swear on this um, there's, again there's not many people there's not many companies that would do blood effects apart from Citadel and Games Workshop so I swear on this now it's time for the good now it's time for the good stuff and going to my metallics another paint I swear on with my metallics is lead belcher I love lead belcher um, I've used Lead Belcher on both um, Rebecca, my, Rebecca Steam and my Jackie Becker. And, you know, it, it's, it's a good gun metal silver, you know, if you if you need it. It's great for Necrons as well. Um, next, I have uh, Balthazar Gold. This is a great, I mean, I wouldn't say, I mean, this is a great base. You know, I, I've used this, on, again, I've used this on my Steampunk dolls. You know, it's just amazing. Again, it's a nice, good, solid colour. It's a nice, good, solid brass. And I love it to pieces. I love brass with our gold. Um, and if you want a good copper, um, ha Hasna Copper is the best copper, I think, in my personal opinion. I love um, Hasna Copper. That, nah. And then my two kind of ones that are very new into the range, and that's uh, Skull Crusher Brass, which comes out like that. Because obviously you can't really see what kind of it will come out. But that's how it comes out dry. And then uh, Fulgurate uh, Copper comes out like that. And they are very beautiful colours. Um, but I, if you if you do do acrylic. Um, doll repaints, I would highly, 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 highly suggest going to Games Workshop and Citadel because they they are the home of, like, I, I personally think of the best um, base colours and metallics I have ever encountered, you know. So, right, let's put these back into this little takeaway box. <laughs> Right. So next, I'm gonna sh the next things I'm gonna show you is how I would cover like the body or the hair and stuff like that. So the three things I would use if I'm using fabric, I would use um thumb. Um, I think in America they call it thumbtacks, but we call it push pins. Obviously, if you don't know what push pins are, let me just get a blue one here. Oh shit! Ooh, okay, okay, I dropped it. <laughs> Uh, this is a push pin, obviously, you know, it just, you know, you just push pin, you know, like, it's great, for, I use, I use it mostly for piercings, because, you know, they're good thickness to use into wire, you know, and, you know, I think that, I think it's great. <laughs> I use them mostly for piercings, I also have little ones down at the bottom here, little nails, which are also good, but, um, they're a lot harder to get into the doll, because they're not as sharp. They're more likely to be able to go through walls as opposed to go through vinyl, which is why I use the sun tags because they're a lot sharper. You can go. Um, I use masking tape. Now, I'm going to show you something on my love for masking tape because you guys have no idea. I don't use any other tape for anything else. I use masking tape a lot. Not masking tape. <laughs> Um, electrical tape. I don't know why electrical tape is so versatile. No, it's great for covering up wires, you know. But in as a Dolby painter, it's great for 
you know, lining the hairline here, so you don't get the hairline with pain or varnish, and it's so versatile, it's so cheap. No, I've... I have used a lot of methods of to covering up um, kind of the hairline and the kind of the face or the body or the legs depending on what I'm doing. But I will tell you this, electrical tape is probably your best friend. I mean, I've used this for kind of clothing, I've used this also for um, accessory making, if um, you saw my top hat I used black electrical tape. But it's such a versatile thing. You can get a bunch pack for like a pound in the like in the 99 cent store. 99 cent. <laughs> and of the 99 pen store. It's just so versatile. I love the I love it bits and it sticks a lot. Um and talking about that, I use clean film a lot. Um uh, when it covers, you know, if I'm making a wig cap or again this is another item that's very versatile that I think every doll we painter should have. You know, because again, it's probably, you know, the electrical tape and the clean floor are probably, and the thumbtacks are probably the cheapest um, items you will ever get for your doll repainting. Because, you know, this is just a film. It's just a clean floor. It's just, well, we call it clean floor. You, some may call it saran wrap. You know, but it's probably the best thing for covering up, like, the legs. Um, this is a good thing. This is um, an Alice in Wonderland project. As you can see, masking tape are kind of there to grab, but it's like cellophane, you know, together, so nothing. And I'm airbrushing the um, um, blue onto the doll's dress because I'm lazy and I can't be asked to hand paint it. So those are the items that I like to use um, for actually maybe covering the doll. Pliers are my essential when I'm doing piercings or anything else like that. Always like sticking my stone, so I didn't like to use. But these are like um, if you ever heard of uh, micro link extensions, they have this like you know metal kind of rubber thing that you can go to kind of hang onto the hair. But as you know, I don't have much hair, so <laughs> I don't need them. Next is this sort of thing. This is my pocket of joy. This contains my brushes. So I have detail brushes, fan brushes, I use fan brushes for either bigger projects like if I'm painting with clothes, painting on clothes and stuff like that. I like to use fan brushes. Um, also I like to use fan brushes if, I'm, if there's like a big blood spatter and it's great for like kind of do, doing cuts. Then I have detail brushes, most of them are like nail art brushes. And then you go to this section here where you can see my dotting tools here, here and here, which are they're great for people's and then you have these little fluffy brushes here which I use for my pastels. Uh, yes, I do use pastels. Um, I don't use them very often. Again, it's one of those other items I don't use very often. But I use soft, I use soft pastels. Um, again, it's, um, pastels are very complicated to get to hang around, I think. Which is why I kind of use acrylics. But... You know, I, most of these brushes are either nail art brushes or just cheap makeup brushes that I have been able to pick up from eBay. Uh, another one of the essential things um, I've now come to love because it's so essential and it's so great, um, but it's very hard to get if you live in the UK. Um, it's Mr. Super Clear. Now, if you're on a budget. <laughs> Mrs. Superclear, it may not be your option. It's very toxic. It's very toxic. You have to do it in a very well ventilated area. I mean, I just spray out my window, I run. <laughs> but, um, I don't have a bottle, I don't have a can, so I'll just put it up here. Um, it, it's, you know, once you get it, you know, you won't regret it. You know, you can do so many layers and so many repaints with it, with just one can. You know, and it, it, I, I think it's a good varnish. You know, for vinyl, with if I use two different varnishes depending on what I'm doing. So if I'm doing the body, which is plastic, I will use a plastic um, mat. Um, 
varnish because I mean the body's shiny anyway so it, it doesn't really matter because I mean the body's plastic so I use a plastic varnish for that and then for the face I will use MSC so um, and if I don't have a if I don't have like you know a readable varnish yeah you know, I just use the nail polish clear nail polish don't use it often but it works just the same so Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's like 20 minutes long, but this is all the equipment that I actually use and I wanted to get more in depth with it. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it and as always, I will see you in the next video. Stay plastic.